Okay, uh, this is section 1.1. This is section 1.1 of the differential equations. Our book has two books in it. The first half of the book is linear algebra. We're going to get to that in about three, four weeks from now. So if you open about half of the books, if you run up to page 329 of our book from the beginning cover, you'll notice after 329 there's glossary, answers, and index. And then after that, you'll notice you start with page one again. So this is the second half of the book. Page one of the second half, differential equations, talks a bit about bag mount something about freefall and deriving few equations now we're not going to derive all the equations in that section because we will come to those in sec chapter two we're going to derive just one if we have an object in freefall we assume that only gravity is working on it and going down in this class is negative so we'll say, assume h is the height at time t. You could say x if you wish, and whatever makes you happy. Let's say x. Well, let's see if it has h. h is the height. Then what this tells you in free fall, the second derivative with respect to t is simply negative g. If you integrate once, you will get dh dt to be negative g is a constant t plus c or c sub 1. c sub 1 would be the initial velocity since if you replace t by 0 this will zero out and that would be the initial velocity if you integrate again with respect to t you'll get the you'll get h the height to be negative g add one to the power divide by that the initial velocity times t plus a new constant we call that the initial height Again, because at time equals zero, those two zero out, and the initial height will be simply c sub 2. So I'm not going to spend a long time on this because we're not going to use it in this section. They just introduced it, and I thought I'll introduce it as well. That's no big deal. I could have also introduced the uh, exponential decay, but again, when we get to that section, I could derive that for you fully. For now, we need to really set the ground for few definitions so that we're speaking the same language so if I start with so we start off with a differential equation a differential equation involving only ordinary derivatives with respect to a single independent variable if you recall y equal f of x x was the independent y was the dependent on x in function notation this is called an ordinary differential equation and we're gonna use o d e that's the majority of this course we really don't deal with partial differential equations in this class at least not that much a differential equation involving partial derivatives with respect to more than one independent variable is called a partial differential equation. All right. So we have to identify those. Again, the majority of this class, we're going to be dealing with an order of differential equations. Now, if you look at page three, you would notice an ample examples of differential equations you know both ordinary and partial in multiple applications i suggest you take a look at that you'll be impressed 
by what differential equations could solve. All right, now, the order of a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative that is present in the equation. So, kind of like power, and it's going to be important for us, kind of like when I say you have a quadratic, you know what that means. When I say second order differential equation, we have certain orders that we're guaranteed to have certain solutions, and so on and so forth. So all of this I'm going to give you examples on in a minute. One last thing I want to define, and that is, I want to define linear, nonlinear. Linear and nonlinear, that's extremely important. Linear slash nonlinear, we say an ordinary differential equations, that's how I'm going to write differential equations from now on on. An order differential equations is a function of an independent variable t. Y is dependent, Y prime is dependent, Y double prime is dependent, all the way to the nth derivative, which is dependent equals zero, is said to be linear. If this function f that looks like e. This function f is a linear function, a linear function of the dependent variables. Why? y prime y double prime and if you recall back from algebra a linear equation is an equation in which the power and the variables equal exactly one here we're adding a bit here we're saying if you're talking about an ordinary differential equation there could only be one independent variable and the dependent is only one which is y so y and its derivatives y and its derivatives must be linear which means you must have y raised to the one power the derivative raised to the one power the second derivative raised to the one power you can't multiply those in any combination or divide them in any combination sort of like back in algebra when you said a linear equation is an equation in which the power and the variables equal one you can never multiply two variables or divide variables here it's the same idea. This idea in the beginning is a bit confusing. I'm going to do a bunch of examples to really clarify this out. And let me get those problems in. Okay, well, first set of problems is on page 5 in our book. Again, in the second half of the book. 1 through 12, a differential equation is given along with the field or problem area in which it arises. I took those out. If you look in the book, they tell you what these are used for there are extremely intro for example this could be used as a wavelength heat equation it has many applications and in the book they indicated that just so that i could save the space i took those off i just pretty much got the problems down classify each of those as an order differential equation or partial differential equations well let's see order differential equation this is taking a derivative with respect to y which indicate that y is a function of x a single right and its traditional derivative this is an ordinary differential equations here do you see you're taking the derivative with respect to two unknowns you depend on x and y so here there are two independent variable one dependent and this is the notation this is not a two this is a partial derivative so this is a partial differential equations here do you see that x depend on t and there's this extra k but they told us it's a constant that makes this an ordinary differential equations here if i look at number eight dy dx y depend on x that is 
and ordinary differential equations a single variable y depend on x again ordinary differential equations and if I look at number 12 I notice y is a function of x ordinary differential equations so this is y equal f of x second give the order so if it is an order in differential equation give the order if i look at number two do we see that two is the highest derivative partial really doesn't you really don't write that down how about number six do you notice we only have a single derivative we call that a first order differential equation you know like star wars first order first order differential equations just like that and number eight do you notice there's a second derivative do you notice on number 10 it's a fourth derivative and on number 12 the highest is the second derivative so it's always the highest of all of those then they say which is the independent which is the dependent well i notice here the independent is x because y is a function of x and the dependent is y and that that's important for when you take a derivative partial we leave out of it here the x dy so x is a function of t t is the independent and x depends on t here y is a function of x so x independent y dependent here most of those normally are given in that form but do you remember when we changed the form what happened in calculus we came up with implicit differentiation and linear nonlinear this is the tricky part just a bit though so I look at this is a second derivative very good this is a first derivative and this is y since none of these are multiplied together or divided or being raised to any power we say this is a linear differential equation it's extremely important to figure out whether you have a linear differential equations because those have one set of solutions versus a nonlinear differential equations that has a totally different way of solving it. If I look at number four, I don't worry about that. That's a partial differential equation. If I look at number six, since X is the dependent, so there's a derivative of x that's very good but do you notice if you multiply those you're gonna get x times x which is x squared that means this is nonlinear and why is it nonlinear because you are multiplying 4 minus x times 1 minus x and when you multiply this you're gonna get x squared so you take the in the, the dependent variable dependent that and its derivative must be raised to one power so you're allowed to have an x x prime is allowed x double prime is allowed x triple prime fourth derivative any of those is allowed you can't multiply those in any combinations if i look at number eight the same problem occurs it's not the independent is y y prime very good this x doesn't change anything it's the dependent and its derivatives do you notice the second derivative is being multiplied by y to the one half? Also, do you notice that y is under a radical? That by itself automatically eliminates the fact that it's linear. You must have y by itself. Number 10, that independent is y. And that's why this is a yes. Look at number 6 and look at number 10. In number 6, x is the dependent variable. You must have x and its derivatives being linear. In number 10, y is the, in the dependent. You want y and its derivatives. This problem only has y to the fourth power. Those are irrelevant as far as the, the, the linear and nonlinear is concerned. Those are constants. And if I look at number 12, of course it's not because you are squaring a y. You can't square the dependent or any of its derivatives. On top of that, you're multiplying a y and a derivative. You can't do that. 
All right. The last portion of this section really is coming up as a set of word problems later on. If you recall, Y varies directly as X. That means Y equals some K times X. K is called the constant of variation. Y varies inversely as X you would say y equal k instead of multiplying inverse you divide so if i want to set those up and this is where we're going to really be solving a lot of applications that's how they came up with it so write a differential equation that fits the physical description the velocity at time t of a particle well velocity assume y is the position then dy with respect to t dy dt the velocity at time t of a particle along a straight line is proportional well they didn't specify it has to be direct to the fourth power of its position x okay they called x the position my mistake let x be the then x prime would be its velocity right so the x dt equal there's a k always always a k if it's direct if they don't specify it's directly proportional to the fourth power of its position fourth power of its position that's really the differential equation that describes this specific physical description and one more the rate of change of mass so i was going to use m for mass but they said a the rate of change of mass A, the rate of change with respect to, in this case, time, very good, is proportional to the square of the mass of salt present at time T. So to the square of the mass, there it is. Let me give you the homework. And there's the homework for this section.